Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are talking about EV Next. So what exactly is an EV Next? Well, in order to talk about that, I think we should start with what is an EV. What you see in front of you, this is EV. EV is a real-time rendering technology in Blender. This is actually the OG demo for it back in uh, Blender 2.8. Eight, where this technology was first added. I believe this is actually adapted from some Unreal Engine code. Uh, this is a real-time shader. It uses more of a traditional PBR uh, workflow, enables you to actually see inside of Blender in real time, more or less what your results are going to look like once you export it out to a game engine. It made it so that working with your scenes, you're getting a much more final render quality uh, result. Not quite up to snuff with cycles, but a hell of a lot better than it used to be. But you're being able to do it all in real time. So now now with the release of Blender 4.1 Alpha, so you're going to need to have uh, 4.1 Alpha, or if it's in somewhere in the future, 4.1 or later, to have access to EV Next. And again, this is an Alpha, so this is a very experimental thing. And as you're going to see in a little bit, some of the stuff still needs some work, especially when it comes to shadows, etc. But what this is going to do is bridge the realm between the world of cycles and the world of EV. So I'm going to show you it right now. With I, I think what is the perfect demo. So this is an old school rendering demo from uh, the Blenders team. I'll show you where you can grab all of these. It's not that exciting from the outside, but let's switch to the camera view right here. And this is a Cycles demo. So here we go, load that one up. And here you can see the viewport here. Let me just frame that to the entire screen. There you go. So here you can see, this is what Cycles looks like. It's, it's a traditional kind of in the uh, viewport ray trace setting. So it's not a full on ray trace, but what you're gonna notice here is if you navigate around or move around in it, uh, not not the perfect working experience. So if you're tweaking lighting, et cetera, and you want to preview it in cycles, this is um, not great. Definitely not great at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to EV rendering. So that's available over here. Switch them there. So we're in cycles right now. Here is the default for EV. Uh, so a cycle scene just traditionally doesn't work in EV. It's just the nature of the beast. But now what we're going to do is switch over to EV next. Now there is one thing that you're going to find is a little bit different between these. It's the lighting has changed slightly. So there's one small tweak I'm going to make. I'm going to come on down here and switch this guy out to 3D view. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the sun here. So with the sun selected, go over to the lighting settings over here. And what we can do is move the angle of our sun. And you'll notice here, if you want to tweak lighting in real time, let's do it. And here you go. There we go. Here is our lighting change and presto. So if you are working with a, um, you know, EV type, rent, sorry, a, a cycles level of rendering quality, but you're working in a real time viewport, well, this enables you to do that. And as you're noticing here, so let me just lock this to the, lock this to the viewport here. Uh, if I navigate around in the world here, so let's go into fly mode, it is much more real time. So this makes uh, tweaking your lighting exactly what you're going to see look so much better. Now you're going to notice there are a couple of oddities here. Uh, shadows are definitely an area where they still need to do some work. Uh, here, let me frame that camera out, right? So, so shadowing, uh, we come down here, we can actually do some, so if you just turn shadowing off, all of a sudden that looks, um, well, some of the artifacts gone. It doesn't look nearly as good, but I also find if I come down here and switch from standard to uh, AGX or filmic, uh, let's go to AGX right here, uh, and you can swap that out a little bit, drop the gamma down or up, or the exposure up or down, or a little bit of both. You can get the scene looking pretty darn sharp right away. And again, the big thing about EV Next is this is actually enabling you to do this all in real time. There's also a number of differences between, so realistically, what EV Next is doing is bridging the rendering gap. So again, EV Next, Cycles. You see the performance difference? So again, let's navigate around the cycles world here. Cycles, right? So you stop, it's gonna render in. You can get an idea of how the shadows work. I'm gonna let's go on back over here, EV next. And yeah, so that gives you an idea. It can render scenes that EV could never handle. Uh, but it's doing it at the same kind of performance level that we traditionally got using EV. Now there's also some capabilities it's got that EV didn't. I'm gonna show you them now. Okay, so here is a traditional scene. Uh, this is um, examples from a kit bash giveaway from uh, a while back on Humble. Uh, so this is a sci-fi scene, nothing really special about it. It's just got some really cool models here. And, and the most important part is they have a lot of emissive surfaces. Now this right now is rendering using Eevee, right? Like 
So, so this is using traditional EV setup. I've put a floor in place here. So we got this floor going on right here and it's right now using a glossy BSDF uh, material on it. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm gonna switch this over to EV Next. This is gonna compare what EV Next can do that EV can't. And what you're gonna notice immediately is you're getting gloss, you're getting uh, reflections off from emissive sources. So surfaces, lights will now bounce off of some surfaces and onto others, which is a very cool functionality. Now you're gonna find you can actually turn some of this off if you wish. So for example, this is using screen trace ray tracing. If I want, I turn that off and you're still getting it, a little bit of it, but nowhere near as nice. So that is uh, one of the major differences in this particular release. There's a few other settings that have changed throughout it, but as you can see, the way it interacts with other surfaces and the way it renders, so again, EV next, EV, EV next, and then EV. And by the way, you can change out the surface here. Uh, so there are a couple of other technical changes that have happened here as well. Uh, there is now um, basically an unlimited light count so uh, before, I think it was limited to 128 lights in the scene. Now it is uh, functionally unlimited. A couple of other changes with how uh, shaders work. We'll get to some of those details in just a second. I just wanted to give you an idea of how this works. So with this material selected, we come over here and we could change it out. So right now it's glossy. We could turn it into um, a principal. And there you see difference there. Uh, we can change that out into a, uh, and what else would be here? Sheen, not much of it, but you can see all the various different uh, different scenes react in a different manner uh, to this guy here. You could also do uh, translucent. It's not set up to actually do anything though, uh, but you do have, uh, again, so here with a glossy surface, you're getting that kind of rendering result. Whereas with a uh, principled, you're getting this. And then once again, if you head on back over to good old fashioned EV, you're getting literally nothing. And then if you work in cycles, you're getting the same thing. It's just very, very, very slow. So there is kind of the bridging area. So this one cycles, you are getting those emissive reflections that you're seeing here, but also as you're seeing, it's, uh, it's still got, uh, what, 25, uh, samples to go before it's going to be done rendering. So, so this EV Next gives you functionality that EV does not have. And on top of that, it gives you performance that cycles can't even dream up. So EV Next, I think is going to be a very big deal. Uh, there is a bunch more to it, by the way. So EV Next right here, um, the features that are in place right now uh, are, you know, let me just go full screen on this one. So we've got right now implemented virtual shadow mapping, subsurface scattering, uh, highlight count. So previously it was limited to 128. Now there's virtually no limit. Motion blur, grease pencils got pushed back, by the way. So that isn't supported right now. Uh, you can have an arbitrary number of BSDFs supported without major performance impact. Ray tracing and SSS is no longer uh, restricted to one BSD node. Uh, thickness output, so new control thickness for translucency, reflection, and volume shaders. Uh, all render passes are done at once. No need uh, to do multiple geometry pass unless you're using a crypto mat. And iridescence catch, this is, I think, uh, so baking has been totally rewritten and data is now stored inside of the light probe objects. And this baking is, I think, basically that real-time screen uh, ray tracing that we saw in action earlier on. So you can see what has been implemented and it's pretty much most of it. But what you're going to find is certain things are missing. Volume probes, cube map probes, planner capture, volume uh, at volumetric rendering. There are some performance issues. And of course, we saw it with the shadowing. The shadowing definitely needs some improvements as well. Uh, so there is work still being done for sure. If you do want to check it out, you can grab it via the daily builds. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is grab the 4.10 alpha. If you're curious about the scenes that were used here, they are all available. Just go to blender.org, go to downloads, demo files, and everything I used here are from either the EV or the cycle section. So the uh, spaceship that we saw earlier on is this guy right here. Uh, and then cycles example for the classroom is this guy right here. And, and the last example came from, uh, again, something from a previous Humble Bundle. So you can't download that one. Uh, but yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, is EV Next real time, much closer to Cycles level of um, results, but with EV level performance. This is a big deal, in my opinion, especially, again, for real time artists working in a game engine. The closer to your final rendered result that you can actually get while working with your artist tools, while actually still working at full speed, big, big game changer. So coming in Blender 4.1 EV Next, let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.